You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9. Coming up on this edition of the show, Lori Marlin and Joel Blue talk about walk a mile in their shoes. Jody Dolan and Tressa Nicholson have the details on a children's closet and formal wear benefit. And Carol Wilcox Jones and Bob Jones stop by to talk about an upcoming Salt Fork Festival dinner fundraiser. It's all ahead on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios, it's Talk of the Town with Perry Baranich. And we want to welcome you to another brand new edition of Talk of the Town. We are coming to you, as always, from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. There was, a, like, rays of light and, and a golden orb in the sky. What is that? It must be like the sun. We haven't seen it for so long, but I hope you're enjoying the day. We really do. Um, we want to talk now about National Crime Victims Rights Week and walk a mile in their shoes. And to do that, joining me in the studio, we have uh, Lori Marlin, who is the victim's advocate with the Guernsey County Prosecutor's Office, and Joel Blue, who is the Guernsey County Prosecuting Attorney. Good to have you guys here. Good to be here. Um, Joel, let's start with you. Let's talk about National Crime Victims Rights Week. Why has there been a week set aside for this? Two reasons. First, there are a lot of programs in the community that exist to help victims of crime uh, and oftentimes victims of crime can feel isolated or unaware of these programs and so the goal is to connect them with those programs let them know what's available to them uh, the other goal is to make people a little bit more aware uh, about victims of crime and, and what constitutes a victim of crime it's really easy on the big cases mm that have a lot of publicity to mm -hmm. identify a victim mm -hmm. but there are so many more people that even on those big cases that are victims and and do suffer and so often what we see is initially in the case there's a a good gathering around and and a lot of support for those victims but as time goes on there's less attention to it mm -hmm. and those victims unfortunately still do continue to suffer as a result of their victimization and still do need support of their community and unfortunately in our day and age we'll go on to the next soundbite mm -hmm. and and the the ones that we just heard are, are forgotten but you know we were talking before we uh, started filming um, when you talk about the lesser crimes things like identity theft could be thrown in there correct mm -hmm. sure absolutely with the opiate crisis there are mm. victims resulting from that. Uh, children mm -hmm. who do not have their parents, parents who do not have their children, spouses and marriages are, are disrupted by all of this. And so we might not normally think of those people as victims, but they certainly are victimized. Yeah, and you said that there are programs available uh, to help people, right? Yes, not only locally, uh, but through the state of Ohio, there are a number of programs to help victims and, and help our local victims here. Okay, you guys are addressing this on a local level uh, with an event called Walk a Mile in Their Shoes. Lori, tell us about that. Well, um, it's going to be an activity that will begin at the courthouse on the courthouse square at 530 on April the 19th. We will have a victim awareness program and then those that are able and willing, we will walk to the city park armory. Um, if you don't feel that you can do that, you can drive out there. Um, but at the City Park Armory, then we will have what's called a resource, a safety resource fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there'll be different agencies that um, are in the community that help uh, with victims um, um, from law enforcement to um, Haven of Hope. There's many, mm -hmm. many that will have uh, tables out there um, displaying what their services are. Um, and you said this is made possible through a grant, correct? Through a grant uh, with the National Crime Victim Rights Week, yes, yes. Okay. Do you find that a lot of times victims of, of crime are hesitant to, to come forward? Um, in a lot of cases, yes, yes. Um, or they, they might just be confused about the process, um, you know, especially with the legal process. Um, you know, um, I've spoke with many that just they, they don't even know where it begins. They don't know um, through the process and, and where it goes to. So that's what we're there for, to help guide them through that step by step, to, to ease them a bit with that process. Is this um, a good way for those who have been victims of crime to maybe get together and, and share their stories and, and find some, I guess, comfort in that? I think it, it's a good opportunity for victims to, to find ways to do that. There, 
won't really be an opportunity for them to come together at this event, but they would be able to connect with services that would uh, allow them to connect with other victims and support one another if they needed to. What we find with victims is that oftentimes there are feelings of shame or embarrassment that, that come with it. It, it shouldn't be there. Uh, it's, not, it's not deserved, but oftentimes it, it's something that they run into. So the goal of this program is not necessarily to identify victims or shine a spotlight on them, but rather just to let them know what's available to them, let them know that as a community, we're here to support them. That's one of the things Guernsey County does really well is we are an excellent community and we know how to exist in relationship with one another and support one another really well here. I think people would be surprised, and I'm asking you this as the prosecuting attorney, um, just, uh, you know, we think that we live in this safe haven, which we do, but yet things happen every day that you deal with. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's always, there is always something else going on. Uh, and I think that's just a, a reflection of society itself. Uh, the, the larger it gets, there are just gonna be you know, circumstances and individuals that maybe buck against that trend a little bit. Sure, sure. When is the uh, the event itself? Let's talk um, about the details of yep, the day. April 19th, okay. um, like I said, begins at 530 on the courthouse square and it goes till nine o'clock. Um, like we'll finish at the um, the city park armory and it is um, an activity for the whole community, okay. not just victims. So it's open to the community. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's an opportunity for the community to come together and um, just show um, um, togetherness and compassion and, and compassion well. in in unfortunately what goes on um, uh, at times and and with the, the crimes and then the victims of those crimes so because uh, we never know i mean mm, at any yeah. day any of us could be a victim of crime yeah so it's kind of um with the service agencies being there um it's it's kind of like maybe a proactive type thing um, um what you can do to help prevent yourself to be a victim of crime. Yeah. But if it would happen, if you do become a victim of crime, what those services are that is out there. The best thing is always to be proactive instead of reactive, and Guernsey County does that really well. Lori Marlin and Joel Blue, uh, much success with the event coming up, and thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you. We'll be back with more Talk to the Town right after this. Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Bill Dixon finds and sells some unique items and hard to find local collectibles. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town, this is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great, great place to live, work, and play. play. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. Welcome back and thank you for watching Talk of the Town. My next guests are Jody Dolan and Tressa Nicholson. And we're here to talk about the uh, children's closet and formal wear uh, benefit that you guys have coming up. Good to see you good guys. To see you. I'll try to reach clear over there and see <laughs> you. Okay, good to have you back on the show. Um, you you had much success with the last event that you had, didn't you? Yes. That you talked about before. Talk about that. We had a uh, prom giveaway mm -hmm. for all the local kids in the area. And with having it on the radio and the talk show, 
It was so successful. We had over 183 kids that we gave away. Yes. That is great. awesome. That is great. And that, and you know, it was a giveaway. Yep. And it, it just helped them to have things that they might normally not have. Right. We had uh, dresses. We also had uh, men's suits. We we had a beautiful pink suit that uh, that somebody actually did. Really? Pick. Yes. One White. of the guys loved it and took it. Yep. Wow. I mean, that would, you would stand out. Yeah. You mm -hmm. definitely would. Well, congratulations Thank on that. You. I'm glad it worked out so Thank well. Thank you so much. So, uh, you know, Tressa, tell us about the, the benefit that's coming up. What's it all about? We're having a benefit um, just to bring in money so we would be able to buy. We want to have like a runway carpet mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. to walk down mm -hmm. and then maybe a backdrop that we take the pictures of them in their pretty dresses. If somebody would love to donate one, well, let's just send the plea out right now. If you have, if you'd like to donate for that to make that available to them, please donate. You can contact us, or you Thank can contact you. them. There you you just put the plea out there, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, what's going to happen during the benefit? We um, have stuff. People has given us stuff that we could have an auction and auction stuff off. And Heather Hopkins has put together some wonderful baskets. Okay. Jody's could tell you more about the baskets and well, everything that we're giving away. <laughs> okay, yes. well let's talk about the baskets. That was nice, by the way. So what we did is we've had people, since it's springtime, a lot uh -huh. of people like to clean out their garages and their yards, and they don't want to have yard sales and garage sales, sure. that's what tagging things. Sure. So they would call me up and say, hey, I've got some things if you want to come over and go through it or pick it up. Okay. So we would go over and get some things, and then, um, of course, I have a whole basement full of stuff, and then my our Heather Hopkins, which was one of our members, mm -hmm. she would take them and put them in these baskets and make them real fancy. Like we have kids baskets, we have uh, little girls baskets, boys baskets, adult baskets, you know, and it's just, it turns out really nice. Okay. It's coming up April 14th. Where? We want to let people know at where. At the Secret Center in Senecaville, in Senecaville. at 3 o'clock. Okay. And uh, is there going to be food available? Yes. The uh, Secret Center is going to provide, I think they're doing their, their famous chicken tenders, and they're oh. so good. Chicken I've tenders, eaten there before, yes. and I know how good it fries, is. Their uh, fries, and thanks to Dale Webster and Cindy up there and Brenda for, you know, helping us with that, and Mick and Barb. Um, they're going to have chicken... Kibasi, hot I dogs, you know, just the things. And then we have people making desserts. Can't have, can't have a benefit without oh, having. Oh, you can't have anything. Tony stay in for Tressa's desserts. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to give them a shout out. You know, next time you're on the show, Tressa, maybe bring some desserts in. Uh, I will. Fun. Well, this, <laughs> this was like <laughs> last minute, or I would have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was, and thank you so much because yeah. it was definitely last minute. <laughs> uh, where did the proceeds go? What are all the proceeds going to benefit? It's just Dresses. for the, the children's closet. And the where what we do is we help kids through kindergarten through their senior, senior. year. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like we do the giveaway for the, the, the dresses, you know, all that is free. All, everything is free. Um, and then when there's a child in need between the kindergarten and, and high school, if they need clothing or something and a teacher sees that, you know, they can contact us and then we make sure that those kids get what they need. That is very admirable that yeah. you guys do that. How do you get all the stuff that you give away? A lot of people donate, just donate. You know, they don't want to have garage yard sales and people will just say, hey, we've got this many dresses and they're just hanging in the closet. Yeah. I've got clothes from the kids that's outgrown them. Mm -hmm. do you, would you like to go through them? Mm -hmm. Would you like some? And that's how we accumulate that. So the benefit this Saturday, what that's for is, like we said, we want to try to get a runway, mm -hmm. probably from Jimmy Silvis, if he's listening, <laughs> the King Carpet. <laughs> that's a shameless plug right there, it really was. <laughs> or anybody that has a runway. And uh, we'd like to have a runway for the kids when they get dressed and come out. You know, they can walk down the runway so we can take pictures. The backdrop so that you know, it looks nice. Um, the other thing is... We had a lot of kids between the sizes of 14 and 28. Okay. So we need to really buckle down and try to find some more dresses between the size of 14 and 28. Okay. So, so that's the, what this the is all. Benefit for. will help you to do that. Yes. Okay. If somebody wants more information, how can they contact you? I know there's a bunch of numbers here, but uh, you know, just contact you or Tressa. Yeah. Yes. A good place Tressa to start. Call Mick, Heather, Heather uh, Hopkins. She works at Snyder Tire. Okay. And you can drop things off to her too. Okay. Okay, so it's coming up this Saturday. It starts yes. at 3 o'clock. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, the food will be great. It'll be a lot of fun, but, you know, more so you're helping people. Yes. yes. Is that why you guys got started in this? Yes. Yeah. Because you like to help people. Yeah. 
Well, one girl came from Bethesda yeah. down here to our wow. giveaway, and I'm going Thursday to meet her mom in St. Clairsville just to give her back her dress because I altered it for her. That, that's awesome. Thank <laughs> yeah. you for Trust what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for what you do. Well, thank you. It's the Children's Closet and Formal Wear Benefit this Saturday at 3 p.m. at the Robert T. Seacrest Senior Center in Senecaville, Ohio. Make sure you take part and help them out. I've been talking with uh, Jody Dolan and Tressa Nicholson. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so thank much. And have success again with thank what you, you do. Thank All right. Back with more Talk of the Town right after this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. The Old Country Loft features country curtains in stock or order that special design to customize your decor. You can also pick out braided or decorative woven rug from her large selection in stock. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash yrptv and be sure to subscribe. Welcome back to Talk of the Town, coming to you from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. And we are here to talk Salt Fork Festival. And joining me, uh, it's good to see you. It's been so long since I've <laughs> seen you. Carol Wilcox-Jones, who is the Salt Fork Festival director, and Bob Jones, who is the, uh, the man behind the woman. How, how you like that? Do you like that? And behind that man stands, never mind. <laughs> never mind. He also is in charge of the performing arts during okay, the festival. Okay, so there you Chair go. But good to have you guys. Arts. Good to see you guys again. Thank you. Good to see Thank you, you, Perry. Uh, let's start with the, uh, we're here, uh, when is the Salt Fork Festival coming up? Let's start the there. The festival is always the second full weekend. Okay. F that's important. Okay. The second full weekend in August, okay. and it will be this year. We're going to celebrate our 49th, 49th year, year in Cambridge City Park. Uh -huh. wow. That's August 10, 11, and 12. That is, that's phenomenal, 49 years. Started in 69. 69, and it's going strong, and uh, it just keeps getting better and better and better. Well, thank you. I'm just awfully happy we that, hope so. that uh, Cambridge has been able to sustain that. That says a lot for this community, really. And it is a community-building yeah. experience and a wonderful one. Um, we're going to have a special event coming okay. up on the 24th of April, okay. which is something we'd like to talk a little bit about. If Let's we go may. ahead. Okay, yes. good. That's why you're here. Well, that's, that's one of the main reasons, you betcha. Um, we are going to have our annual fundraiser. Okay. It's, we're calling it the Festival Bash. Last year it was the Broadway Bash. Now, now it's, it's the, the Festival, Festival Bash. Bash. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be a wonderful event. Uh, we have so many fine things planned. It'll be April the 24th, okay. which is a Tuesday evening. Okay. Doors open at 5 for social hour. We'll okay. have... Um, Appetizers, courtesy of McKenna's, McKenna's Market. Market. Yes, yes and that. a cash bar with wine and beer. We're going to have a catered meal uh, by Theo's. That'll be about six fifteen, and then we're going to have the Dixieland band come and play. We're putting down a dance floor so that we can do some dancing. We have silent auction, Chinese auction, raffles, prizes. It's going to be quite an evening of celebration. And. 
Yes, sir. It's going to be the talk of the town. <laughs> oh, yeah. give that man a cigar. <laughs> oh, very nice. But, uh, you know, and, and again, Bob, this is a, a major fundraiser for the Salt Fork Festival. Yes. Uh, the what, one and only that we do. The one and only that you do. Well, per, um, per annum. And it, it, what are some things that this will help you to be able to do? What, what are some things that it will help you to do with the festival? Help me help or... Help the festival help itself the festival. with the proceeds. To have people come to this wonderful event. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say a little bit about the band who's going to be there. Yeah. Magnificent. Yeah. Uh, most people would remember Jerry Weaver and the Good Time Jazz Good Time Band, Band out of yes. Coshocton. Yes. Well, they sort of closed up shop a couple of years ago, but Jerry and Mr. Uh, Cambridge's Mr. Music, Len Thomas. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. Don Kason from the old, older band. Okay. And Dave Jacobs, bass the player best extraordinary. bass player. Yes. I'm going to tell you, the best bass player I have ever heard. Yes. So Mr. Fabulous. Jacobs. A absolutely. He, yes. he, he played uh, Mississippi Queen, the Delta Queen up and mm -hmm. down in Ohio, mm -hmm. and Mississippi. Just a magnificent. They will be playing. Oh, They'll wow. be playing for That'll the dancing awesome. as, as well as for dinner music. And they are, I think they're, they're, they're called the, the Preservation... Dixieland Dixie All-Stars. That's right. Wow. That's the new name That's of their, their band. Name. And they are an all-star band. And probably the <laughs> only are. quartet for miles around, I don't think they'd mind me saying this, that have two octogenarians in that group. Wow. Yes. Wow. So think of their experience, and they play so oh, yeah. beautifully. Yeah. We got to go to hear them practice. <laughs> oh, it just makes your feet oh, happy. Oh, you can. And so, hence, you can dance. Yes. You, know? yes. you can and, dance. And dancing is welcome. Yes, it is. That's um, and encouraged. Be, uh, and encouraged. It's gonna be a, a highlight. So it's going to be a great evening. Um, how much are tickets? Let's tickets go ahead and talk about that. Tickets are forty dollars a piece. That's for the event. That includes, of course, the silent auction um, and the dinner. And then the prizes. I have to say, we're yeah, having some that. beautiful things for silent auction. Not just uh, well, there's just such a wide range of things. There are services, there are practical things, there are artistic things, there are handmade things, there are tickets to Blossom Festival, Cleveland mm. Orchestra, mm -hmm. um, tickets to Laura Schumann conducts the Ooh. orchestra in um, and the series Southeastern Ohio. And that is a phenomenal games. orchestra. And well. those are those are going to be given what? Any baseball games this oh, year? Oh yes, <laughs> baseball games. Yes, yes, there are going to be some baseball games. We have uh, water park. Uh, what else? Oh, there's a lovely weekend at Seneca Lake, a home that's being donated, including a $50 wow. gift card to go to uh, have dinner. Wow. Yeah. Lots I'm, of great prizes. There's a wide range of things, and that's going to be a real treat, I think. Plus, it's going to be beautiful. We have mm -hmm. people helping us decorate. Excuse mm -hmm. me. <coughs> helping us to decorate. <laughs> Just hold it there. Just, just hold it there. It. That'll work. There. Yeah. And, and lovely plant materials out in the front. Oh, I just, I'm getting very excited, you can tell. Well, it sounds like it, <laughs> it's, it's going to be, be an lovely, exciting lovely time. Thing. Um, so. And it's just, in the time we have left, let's talk about uh, this year's festival. What can folks uh, expect to see and do? How about on here? A Lilliputian microphone. Yeah, a Lilliputian <laughs> microphone. We've right. had it all on this show, but, yeah. you know, what... what uh, What's, what well, the festival is the festival. Is, okay, this year our plans for the festival, which, which are developing even as we speak, we have, of course, the lovely big tents, which we will again have. Last year we had over 200 items in the student arts tent. That was something that made us very proud because we set up a gallery and all the schools were involved. We were able to present a lot of their art and give prizes mm -hmm. for that. We gave some mm -hmm. scholarships okay. away. Okay. It was delightful. We had about 80 artists on the grounds who who were showing a wide variety of their skills okay. and crafts. We had delicious foods, which we will again have, uh, food vendors. Um, one of the things that we introduced last year were these beautiful classic automobiles, which I'm not quite prepared to talk about who's okay. coming, but okay. we will have that. Okay. We're going to have again a contest with Lego design for kids okay. grades K through five. Uh, of course, we have the fabulous craft class. Yes. So that's a make and take experience for okay. kids and adults. Okay. And all of that will be happening Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that week in August. But right now, we're hoping that people will come to our okay. dinner event. And Tickets are available right here on Wheeling Avenue. Okay. If you can get to Country Bits, okay. they're helping us to sell them. And unfortunately, we are out of time. But oh. I got to tell you, these two are the consummate professionals. They are. That's right. Nothing. 
deters her from her mission. Thank you so much. It's been <laughs> a pleasure. Carol you. Wilcox, Thank Jones, and Bob Jones, we, thanks for coming We in. want to come back before the festival in August. You come back, and we'll make sure the mic stays on. So. <laughs> okay. Okay, and um, we're going to be back to wrap this one up right after this. <laughs>
Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home.